Tropes often carry with them a negative connotation, since there's so many of them that grow stale from being overused or not used in a creative way. But they're not inherently a bad thing. Whether it's through TV, video games, or literature, tropes are all around us. They're simply any reoccurring themes or devices. A book is not a book without them, and in the hands of a great author, tropes can be subverted and used in ways to redefine the genre. So I put together a list of some of my favorite tropes in fantasy, and while these are my favorites, I have seen many of these be done just terribly. But oh baby, when they're done good, I like it! I'm also going to post a video about the tropes that I hate, so make sure to watch that one as well. Now I'm going to break this up into character tropes, world building tropes, and plot tropes. But before getting into it, have you ever wanted to learn a skill but don't know where to start? Well this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people just like yourself. Now whether you want to learn about illustration, video editing, photography, writing, or really anything else, Skillshare has you covered. I recently finished a productivity masterclass taught by Ali Abdal, and he gave some really helpful reflective writing prompts to help boost productivity. Skillshare is ad-free and it's constantly launching new premium classes, and did I mention that it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription? The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and free is the best price. Crouching Moron, Hidden Badass. This is the character that's kind of purely designed for comic relief, at least at first glance. But then once once they're pushed to a certain point, they pull out some badass moves. It's always the unsuspecting one, whether it's Neville Longbottom or Iroh, or my favorite, Samwise Gamgee. He's not very bright, he's easily frightened, but he also killed a man-eating spider demigod in single combat, stormed a tower full of orcs to rescue a friend, resisted the ring's temptation, and carried Frodo up the side of a volcano while dehydrated and starving. Sam is the real hero, you can't change my mind. Now that I think of it, even the, the North Polar Bear from Tolkien's Letters to Father Christmas, he's usually just a, a cheerful, bumbling polar bear doing his thing, but then when the goblins attack, he just Hulk smashes them. I guess that's an odd example, but it works. The wise wizard slash mentor character. This is probably one of the most popular characters in fantasy. This is, this is your Gandalf. The wise mentor is often an elderly figure that appears near the beginning of the book to train the protagonist and give them the information that's needed to face their trials ahead. Now, often this character ends up dying later on in the book, or they sacrifice themselves for everyone, or they just mysteriously vanish so that the protagonist has to stand on their own two feet and, uh, and use the skills that they learned. Yes, this is a character trope that is overdone, but I'm not tired of it. I would say my two favorite examples of this besides Gandalf would be Moraine and Tom Marilyn from The Wheel of Time. There's also Abanthi and Elodin or Elodin from the Kingkiller Chronicle, though he's kind of insane. If you watched my top 10 fantasy characters video, then you know that I love Redemption arcs. Characters that go through redemption are some of my favorite characters to read. Dalinar Kolin from the Stormlight books has a very interesting redemption story because it's kind of in reverse, where he's already in the process of becoming a better person when we're introduced to him, and we don't learn about the extent of his terrible past until much later on. But hands down, one of the very best redemption arcs I've ever seen in fantasy goes to Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. I'd go so far to say that he has the best well-written character development in animation history. I'm mostly focusing on books for this video, but you can learn a lot about good character development from a Nickelodeon cartoon, of all things. The fellowship slash crew trope, basically when you have a crew of characters, especially if they're best friends or they slowly become best friends, a sort of found family of loyal companions, where you got, you got banter and funny moments between them, that's, that's one of my favorite things in books right there. Some examples that I can think of include the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch, uh, we got the Mistborn books by Brandon Sanderson, even Joe Abercrombie's The First Law Trilogy, you have a very dysfunctional group. The Sanity Slippage Trope. These are characters that have their sanity begin to unravel and they end up going a little bit mad. 
mad. Or maybe they're just the genius type of characters who have lost a few marbles, uh, like Elodin from the King Killer Chronicle. There's also Zeth and several other characters like this in the Stormlight Archive, but I would say my favorite example of sanity slippage comes from a very prominent character in the Wheel of Time. Bring on the legendary weapons and powerful artifacts. Usually these are items that have a name and a long history to them, or it's just something that's rare that only a few people have. Examples of this trope include the One Ring, the Heron Blades from the Wheel of Time, Shard Blade and Shard Plate from the Stormlight Archive, and Valerian Steel from A Song of Ice and Fire. And I can't forget Stormbringer from the Elric books, which was what inspired Sanderson to write Nightblood, my, my favorite sentient weapon. Sentient weapons is another cool trope. Magic A is Magic A. I'm talking about internally consistent magic systems. I love when, ma when books have magic systems that are fully explained, and I feel like Brandon Sanderson does a very good job at doing this. He sets rules and limitations to his magic systems, and he sticks with it. Lost Civilizations, bring me more fantasy books that have ancient Lovecraftian ruins that the protagonist can Indiana Jones their way through. Whether it's stealing a ruby-hilted dagger from Shadar Logoth or exploring the halls of Urethiru, I'm always up for exploring some mysterious abandoned city. Some of my favorite descriptions to read in fantasy uh, is, is the delicious food. The Wizarding World brings us butterbeer, the Stormlight Archive has chowda and various different curries, uh, the Redwall books have like hazelnut bread and so many different food descriptions. I like food, I don't know who doesn't, so, so bring me more food descriptions. <laughs> I love when fantasy books have different dimensions or parallel worlds. Uh, examples include the multiple Londons of the Darker Shade of Magic series, Shadesmar from the Stormlight books, and Teliran Riyadh, the World of Dreams from Wheel of Time. Training sequences. I don't care how many times I've seen this one, it never gets old. Whether it's Vin testing out her Mistborn abilities, Kaladin training in the chasms, or Kyler Stern learning to become an assassin, I love a good training session. I like when we get to see characters struggling to improve and get good at something, because it makes us feel more invested in them. All is lost. The heroes are surrounded and outnumbered, and despite giving a good fight, are left with no hope. But then the backup arrives just in time. This is the Here Comes the Cavalry trope. Now, sometimes the entire reason for the hero's heroic stand is because they know that the cavalry is coming, just as long as they can hold on enough, which of course builds the tension. The thing is, is that if this is done badly, then this trope just becomes a big glaring deus ex machina, but if played well, it can be extremely satisfying. So those are some of my favorite fantasy tropes. I know I'm forgetting some. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite fantasy tropes are, and like I said, I'll be posting a video soon about the tropes that I hate. I'm also going to leave a link to my mom's GoFundMe down in the description. I mentioned this in a previous video, but I'll leave some of the details down below if you want to read about that. Anything donated to that helps out so much, and I really appreciate it. Uh, and if you want to help support the channel, then make sure to check out my Patreon.